The White House just announced a diplomatic boycott of the upcoming Winter Games in China. Again, this is a diplomatic boycott, not a full boycott. That means no U.S. government officials will attend the Games in Beijing, but U.S. athletes can still participate. The U.S. is accusing China of committing genocide against Uyghur Muslims and other human rights abuses, both in China and Hong Kong. What's good, people? What's good, YouTube? What is good? The demoralization of the populace continues. The demoralization of the populace continues out here. You got... You, United States figured, hey, it, it's a good idea to just boycott the Chinese Olympics because of a variety of reasons here. The on-paper reason is because of the tennis, I guess, Peng Shui, the Chinese tennis player, I don't know how, 30-something years old, 30 to 40 years old, I think she was like 36, said she got raped by a 75-year-old, I think the guy, I think he was literally 75 years old, a 75-year-old, Chinese official just saying that I Don't really quite Know what to think about that. So you're talking about us a, a grandpa is able to rape a an, a tennis athlete um, I mean that's interesting to me, but that's not the topic of this video here the topic is how the United States figured it was a good idea to boycott the Chinese, the U the Olympics in China for 2022, the Winter Olympics. Amr, why don't you kick us off? Uh, thank you. Um, first, I just uh, on the Olympics uh, and the diplomatic boycott. Uh, several reports the president has decided to move forward with the move. Uh, is that correct that he's come to this decision? Uh, the Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games, given the PRC's ongoing genocide and crimes against uh, humanity in Xinjiang and other human rights abuses. The athletes on Team USA have our full support. We will be behind them 100% as we cheer them on from home. We will not be contributing to the fanfare of the games. U.S. diplomatic or official representation would treat these games as business as usual in the face of the PRC's egregious human rights abuses and atrocities in Xinjiang, and we simply can't do that. As the President has told President Xi, standing up for human rights is in the DNA of Americans. Uh, we have a fundamental commitment to promoting human rights, and we feel strongly in our position, and we will continue to take actions to advance human rights in China and beyond. Uh, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has already suggested that it'll be countermeasures, firm countermeasures, I believe the term that they used. Have they indicated uh, uh, to the administration yet what sort of action that they might take uh, for this move? Well, I don't have anything to read out in terms of their intentions or what they would convey uh, from officials from the PRC. But our view is that's not the right way to view or frame our relationship. Uh, our view is that uh, cooperation uh, on transnational issues is not a favor to us. It is not a transaction. The PRC should be taking action on issues uh, where, uh, there are, where the global community, uh, to meet the needs of the global community. Uh, and that's what they should do uh, in order to be a part of leadership in the global community. So I don't have anything to read out on their front. They can certainly speak for themselves. Um, to me, it's just kind of, it's just kind of interesting to have a boycott of the Chinese Olympics because on paper, the reason is the Peng Shui incident. But to be 100% honest, we already know that the, at least on this channel, we already know that China's been at war with the US and a large part of the rest of the world for a while, at least since 2013. Um, no, 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 at least since 2017, sorry, at least since 2017, according to, like, according to the things that they put out, they had their three, three doctrines of warfare or whatever. I forgot exactly what it was, but, like, psychological warfare, 
um, informational warfare, and like there was another type that I forgot. Honestly, I don't really give a damn. But um, cause like they're taking L's in terms of their own populace, and like we're taking L's in terms of our own populace. So I don't know who the hell is going to war with who because over there, like they're fucked over over here we're kind of fucked over maybe that's why we're going to war because both economies are shit so maybe that's why they're trying to kind of go to war here i don't know who they're going to war with maybe that's why it's all informational and whatnot because there's no actual people who are down to like really fight now china said earlier that it would retaliate if the u.s made this move let's bring in gordon chang he's a columnist for newsweek and the author of the book the coming collapse of China. Gordon, China's threatening retaliation. What does that look like, or is it simply a bluff? We don't know what it would look like, Anna. Um, China has threatened similar measures in the past and not carried through. This time, though, is different. I think Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, will actually impose some sort of cost on the U.S. But because China needs the U.S. now much more than we need them, these measures are not going to be substantial. Got to remember that China's going through some really severe crises right now, especially the debt matter. Got to remember that China's going through some really severe crises right now, especially the debt matter. And so I'm sure Chinese leaders don't feel very secure. Do you think this is the right move by the Biden administration? Does a diplomatic boycott send a strong enough message? I think that it's a step in the right direction. Um, it has to occur. But I also think that we should be trying to get the International Olympic Committee to move the games. And that's a number of reasons. First of all, there's a question about the safety of athletes. With the disappearance of Peng Shui, the, um, the tennis star, um, there's a real concern that athletes going to China will not be safe. But also, of course, as you mentioned, um, there's the issue of China committing genocide. And the 1948 Genocide Convention actually requires us to prevent and punish acts of genocide. And, and one can interpret that as a move as a, that we should be boycotting a, the games in, in full stop. Um, like, to be honest, me personally, I'd rather fight against our own government than go and fight against China. So it, I'm pretty sure a lot of people there feel the same. So it is what it is. And it's because of decisions like this. I really wonder how, how much they talk to athletes or at least representatives of the athletes like how how much involved were they in the discourse when they decided to not attend the 2022 games because that's a lot of like bread people are leaving on the table there especially in an era of the united states where like in terms of work that you can take pride in there's not much there's not much there's not much, there's not that many options in terms of work that you can take pride in. So something like the Olympics, that's, that's when you're training that hard and it only comes around four years, that's like the definition of work that you can take pride in. And I just kind of feel bad, honestly, because for those athletes, because they don't, a lot of them probably don't really give a shit about like what our government feels about the Chinese government or whatever and vice versa for those for a lot of the Chinese they probably don't give a damn about what how our government feels about the Chinese like how their government feels about the US government like they're just trying to eat and like trying to raise families and shit if they can a lot of them just gave up on that so like you know to me, that that's that's kind of BS. Yeah, man, that's why I say, dude, don't get in bed with the government. So I, I was gonna open up with that line. I forgot if I even opened up with it. But like, just don't don't get in bed with the government, man, because this is this is what it can get you. And I know it's becoming increasingly hard to separate yourself from some of this. Uh, like I just I say government in general, but like that's just because I could break it down. But I mean, I've broken it down in previous videos so it is what it is man like if you want the breakdown go to those previous videos but like a lot of you guys know what i mean when i say when i say government there's uh something to be said for just trying to make your own decisions there's a lot of propaganda going on out there i just try to something to be said for trying to make your own decisions trying to do work that you can be proud of and just not being, not trying, not succumbing to like 
the like the greater like that's the propaganda um because there's propaganda on both sides like the u.s has a lot of propaganda going on there's a lot of propaganda in china australia like even italy like i have viewers from italy like two percent of my viewership is from italy so even italy man try to stay away from that shit um and yeah i don't really know what else to say on that so like i'll just i'll just leave you with that i just want to talk about that because that when i saw that headline today that like really annoyed me so it is what it is all right impressions keep going up thank y'all for tuning into the channel and i'll i'll catch y'all later man peace